Let's learn how to implement the WebSocket in Active Web Server. To learn that, we will build a simple real-time chat backend server. First, in our project, let's go to cargo.tomile file. We will add some dependencies. We will add Active Web for backend server. And Active WS, this WS is stand for WebSocket. We will use this to implement a WebSocket in Active Web Server. Then futures UTL, we will use this to split a WebSocket. And Tokyo, we will use broadcast channel from Tokyo. Then let's go to main.rs file. First, let's define handler to handle WebSocket. Let's define a sync function. Let's give it a name WS for WebSocket. We will add three parameters for its handler. First one, let's give it a name rec. Type will be HTTP request. Second one, let's give it a body. Type will give it a web payload. Later, we will handle WebSocket from these two parameters to get a WebSocket. Third parameter, we will get a shared state sender from channel. So we will give the name TX for sender. And the type will be web data is data. Type will be sender. This sender type will import from Tokyo Sync Broadcast Sender. In sender, let's give it a type of string. So we will use this sender to send a string value. Return type will give it an IMPL responder. Let's get a web socket from this request and the body payload. So we will call Actis WS handle function. We'll pass a reference to this request as the first argument, and this payload body as the second argument. This handle function will return result, so we will call unwrap to handle the result. To split this web socket to HTTP response session and message stream, we will import a future UTL stream extensions. So at the top, let's use future UTL stream ext. Then let's create a tuple to store the return value. First one is response, let's give it a name res. Second one is session, let's give it a name session. Third one is stream, so we will give it a name stream. Because later we will use this session to send a message to WebSocket client and use this stream to receive message from WebSocket client. So we need to make these two variables mutable. We will add a mute keyword for these two variables. Then let's get the receiver from its sender TX. Let's create a variable. Rx equal to tx. Star. We will call subscriber method. So it will get a receiver from this sender. This receiver can receive message from its sender. Because we will use this receiver to get a message, so we need to make this variable to be mutable. Let's add a mute keyword. Let's spawn an async task to continuously receive message from WebSocket client in background. So it will not block the thread. We will call ActiveWeb RT spawn function to spawn an async task. We will pass a sync block as argument. We will add a move keyword to this block so it will move the ownership to this block. After this spawn method, let's add a semicolon. In this block, we will use while let loop to continuously receive message from WebSocket client. On the right side of this equal sign, we will call stream the next method to receive message from this stream. Then we need to call await to handle the future. It will return an option holder the result. So we will also use this while let to destructure the value in the option and the result. So if the option is sum, hold a result. If this result is an OK, it is OK will be the message. Let's give it a variable name, msg. You can see its type is message type. This message type is an enum type. We use match expression to handle this enum type of message. So match msg. 
We want to get the content from the message. So first time we give it a pattern message text. In this text will be the content of the message. So let's create a variable, give it a name content. In this arm, when we receive the message content from the WebSocket client, we will send this message content to the channel by using this sender TX. So TX the send will pass its content as argument. Then we need to call to string method to convert it to string. Then we need to call a wrapper to handle the result. Then let's add an arm for the match all pattern. So an uh, underscore for the match all pattern. In this arm, we just uh, return nothing, an empty pair of parentheses. Let's spawn another async task to continuously receive message from a channel in background. So active web RT spawn async move. After this spawn method, let's add a semicolon. We also will use while letter to continuously receive message from the receiver RX. So on the right side, RX dot receive method, then we need to call await to handle the future. It will return a result. So let's also destructure the inner value in the result. If the result is OK, hold the message msg. After we receive the message from the this receiver X, we will send this message to the WebSocket client. We will use this session to send the message. So session text will pass this message msg as argument. Then we need to call await to handle the future and a wrapper to handle the result. Last, we need to return this res from this handler. So at the last, we will return this res. Here, after this a wrapper method, we need to add a semicolon to return nothing. Let's go to main function. First, we will add an attribute access web main for main function. So we can add a single keyword for this main function. This main function will be a sync function. In this main function, let's first create a broadcaster channel. We will call broadcaster from Tokyo channel. Then we will pass a capacity as argument. Let's pass a hundred as argument. We will use TurboFish syntax to add a type annotation for this channel because we will use this channel to send and receive string value, so we give it a type of string. This channel will return a tuple. This tuple will contain two elements. First one is sender, second one is receiver. We only will use sender, so first variable we give the name tx for sender. Second variable we will not use, so we give it an underscore. Then let's create a HTTP server. So HTTP server import from xweb. New function. We pass a closure as argument. We add a move keyword to move the ownership to its closure. In its closure, let's create a new application. App import from xweb. New function. Then we will call app data to share this TX in its xweb server. So we will pass argument data new function, then we pass this tx.clone as argument. Then let's add a root to handle the WebSocket. We give it a pass like a slash ws. Then we will give it a web request method get. Then we will add a handler use two method. We will pass a handler this ws as argument. Let's remove this powerful parentheses. After this HTTP server new function, let's add a bind method to bind the address. This server will listen now. We will give it address 0.0.0.0, .0, .0, .0 port 3000. So this server will listen now localhost 3000. Then let's call a wrap to handle the result. Then let's call run method to run this server and await to handle the future and a wrap again to handle the result. Here we got an arrow should be colon method. So colon. No, there are no errors. In terminal, let's run cargo run to start our WebSocket server. Then let's use postman to test our WebSocket server. Let's open a new tab. Here, we will choose this WebSocket. We will enter URL ws 
colon slash slash localhost three thousand slash ws. Then you can click this connect button to connect to our WebSocket server. So it will show connected. Then let's open another tab. In this tab, we'll choose WebSocket. Also, URL is ws colon slash slash localhost three thousand slash ws. Click this connect button. It will connect it. Then let's go back to the first tab. Let's send a message. Here, let's type a message like hello. Let's send this message. Click this send button. We will see the message we send hello and also we receive the message hello. Let's go to the second tab. In second tab, you will see the message we receive is hello. In second tab, let's also type a message like a word. Let's send this message. Here, we will see the message word we send and also the message we receive word. Let's go back to the first tab. Here, you can see we receive the message is word. When we send a message, here, this stream will get that message. After we get that message, we use this channel to send this message again. Every receiver will receive the message from this TX. After a receiver get the message, so it will use this session to send the message again back to the WebSocket client. So both of them will get the message. This is how we implement a WebSocket in Active Web Server and build a basic real-time chat application server. Hope to see you next time.